Somebody look at your neighbor and say, she finna bring it tonight. I said, somebody look at your neighbor and say, she finna bring it tonight. And if you ain't got a neighbor, look at yourself and say, she finna bring it to fuck a night. Oh, we gonna jump right into it, because that's how we do it over here. Florence Billard was born on June 30th in 1943. She was born in Detroit, Michigan. Florence Ballard said that her father inspired her to do music. Her father, Jesse, was an amateur musician. Her daddy was known for playing the guitar. Her father would teach her different songs. She would then sing the songs and he'd be playing the guitar while she was singing. I can remember back in the day, you know, my daddy, he plays the flute. That was his instrument of choice. And he'd be playing a flute and he'd call me in there. He'd say, Fifi, come up in here real quick. That's what they used to call me back in the day, Fifi. And I'd come in there, he, he'd tell me to sing this song and sing that song, honey. I'd be up in there singing to that motherfucker magical flute. This had me in a frenzy and shit. Come on, let's talk about it. So she said she used to sing while her daddy was playing the guitar. And that's when she noticed her love for rhythm and blues. Come on, let's talk about it, y'all. Florence Billard and her family was staying in Detroit. And while her siblings and her, her parents were staying in Detroit, they began to face financial difficulties. How many of you know who, how it is? I said, how many of you know who, how it is? When you, you know, your parents back in the day used to face financial difficulties, but they always seem to make it over. Some of them, come on, let's talk about it. She said she could remember they was always moving around to different neighborhoods in Detroit. Always just moving around. I, I had certain friends and they didn't settle for too long. They was always moving around. So I kind of can understand what she was talking about, but she said they used to move around different neighborhoods in Detroit, Michigan. And by the time she was 15 years old, they finally settled down. They settled down in the Brewster, the Brewster Douglas housing projects located in Detroit, Michigan. She said as soon as they, they found a place where they can lay their head in Detroit, Michigan at the Brewster Douglas housing projects soon as they were able to do that she said a year later her father died from cancer okay so you know all the time she used to spin at the guitar it was over and Florence Billard attended Northeastern High School she had a vocal coach by the name of Abraham Silver and Abraham Silver would would help her with her voice. Now that daddy gone, she had to have somebody help to help her with a voice. She had to have somebody else to help her with a voice. And he would, her vocal coach, he would teach her different ways to sing songs, you know, different ways to express herself in that song. While in middle school, Florence Ballard, she met Mary Wilson. Oh, come on, let's introduce them then. I said, she met Mary Wilson. Now, why she was attending Northeastern High School, that's when they actually became friends. Let's tell this story tonight. Florence Billard already knew that she wanted to be, you know, a professional singer, a famous singer from a young age. She knew this right here. You know, and she started at a young age. She worked towards her music career, okay? doing everything that she could to make sure that that dream happened. One day, it was a man by the name of Milton Jenkins. And Milton Jenkins, at that time, he was managing a group called the Primes. Y'all heard of them? The Primes. The Primes now is known by their group name, The Temptations. 
But back then, they was called the primes. Every time you turned the fucker around, the temptations was changing their motherfucker good name. So at that time, they was going by the primes. Come on, listen to me. And Milton Jenkins heard Florence Billard's voice. She was singing out somewhere. He, he heard her voice. And he was interested. Okay, he was interested. So Paul and Eddie from the group, The Temptations, Okay, but it was the primes back then. He asked Florence Billard. They had to ask Florence Billard if she knew any other girls that can sing. You know, any mother, you know what I'm saying? Them other girls who knew how to sing too. So Florence said she knew some other girls, you know, that can belch it out, that can hold some good tunes, and that can sing a song. And Florence, she got Mary Wilson, Diana Ross. She got them together. Okay, and it was also another person who used to sing with them just for a short period of time named Betty McGlone. Betty McGlone. And at this time, the Supremes, they was going by another name. Stay with me, y'all. They was going by another name called the Prime Mets. Yeah, before they was the Supremes, they was called the Prime Mets. Listen to the story. The Prime Mets now better known as the Supremes, they start performing all over the place in the Detroit area. They perform at social clubs, talent shows, and at different sock hops. A sock hop is where teenagers would go and, you know, they would sing different music and things like that and perform and dance and shit. Okay? And one day, they went to an audition for Motown Records, founded by Barry Gordy. And when the primates, now known as the Supremes, when the primates sung for Barry Gordy, he told them to come back and see him when they finished high school. The primates, they said, fuck of that shit. I don't know what the fuck he talking about. They said, we going to take our asses up the Motown studio when we get out of school. Okay, business. When we get out of school, we going to go on up there. And we're going to keep on, you know what I'm saying, singing for Barry Gordy, being around his ass and, you know, being in his face so he can't turn us down. Okay? We're going to do this shit until he signs us to that motherfucker Motown record label. And that's exactly what they did. The primates, now known as the Supremes, that's exactly what they did. They convinced Barry Gordy to sign them to Motown Records. Barry Gordy said, he said, I'll sign y'all to Motown Records, but y'all got to do one thing for me. Uh huh. Barry Gordy said, I want y'all to change y'all name. I don't want to want y'all going by the primates no more. I want y'all to change y'all name. And at this time, Betty had already left the group. And when a girl signed with Barry Gordy, they changed their name from the primates to the what? Y'all know it. Come on, say it with me. The Supremes. Hey. That's right, y'all. They changed them. They named from the primates to the Supremes. And Florence Ballard was the one who chose the name the Supremes, just like she got the girls for the group. And the rest, y'all, it was history. When the Supremes joined to, to, you know what I'm saying, to the Motown records, when they joined down with Motown, everybody in their mama start to know about the Supremes. They said, them Supreme girls... Shit, them supreme bitches. Hell yeah, we know about them. They became, the, you know, worldwide. Worldwide superstars. Okay, with all types of hits and things of that nature. Y'all ready to go deeper down this rabbit hole tonight? <laughs> I told y'all I wasn't going to tear it too long. Y'all ready to go deep down this rabbit hole tonight? Because it's always something down here where we can find. Come on, let's do it. The Supremes, they became worldwide superstars. But everything that glitter... Ain't gold. They faced some things when they was in Motown Records. Before Florence Billard passed away, she was, you know, she was blowing all types of motherfucker weed smoke. The Kush, the Purple Haze, the Skittles, okay, the little Drill Boy, all types of shit. She was telling all types of business. She was telling every damn thing. Okay, like she already knew what they was going to do to her. Ah, uh, let me go ahead of myself. Florence Ballard, I said Florence Ballard said that Barry Gordy treated her like dog shit. 
That's right. She said he treated her like dog shit. And he wasn't, you know, he wasn't giving them the money that they deserved. The money that they really was making. He wasn't really giving them everything that they was, you know, supposed to be getting. He was slum at that shit. She said, Florence Billet. She said that Barry Gordy wanted, you know, wanted them to, to be his pup, her, they puppets. Be his puppets. That's what he, this was what she said out of her mouth. She said that Barry Gordy, you know, wanted them to be his puppets. Florence Billet said that, that guess what? She said this in an interview, and I'm going to put this stuff in a link so you can come back and check it out in the description. It's down there, so click on it so you can see it for yourself. Okay, it was different interviews that Florence Biller did, and she was exposing everything. I got these in the link so you can check it out. Okay, I want you to hear it for yourself. Florence Biller said that Barry Gordy said that, that he wanted to control her. This is what she said. Okay, he told her this, that he wanted to control her. And if he couldn't control her, then guess what? He didn't want her around no more. He didn't want her in a motherfucking group no more. This motherfucker, Barry Gordy, he ain't what people think he is. He tried to sit up there like he was just the best manager. Uh-uh, that motherfucker was scheming in the motherfucker backgrounds. And please don't get it twisted. Diana Ross and Mary Wilson... They was having sex with Barry Gordy, okay? They was having sex with Barry Gordy, y'all. That's why they was really able to just stay in the group as long as they did together and stuff like that, okay? He was fucking them. Let's just put it quite frank. And if they act right, he'll get them a few gifts and shit, a few fur coats, a few cars or something. Florence Billet was not doing that with Barry Gordy. She said, hell up to the motherfucker Noah. Okay, I'm singing for you. Okay, you managing us, and that's all it is. She told that little fucker face, Barry Gordy, exactly how she felt about things. He wanted yes man type of, you know, bitches. He wanted the yes ma'am type of bitches. The ones who would sit back and, okay, yes, daddy. Okay, daddy. Kiss my motherfucker ass. Let me disrespect you and treat you like shitter. But you better be good to me. Uh-huh, you know some people like that. I want to I wanna disrespect you and just treat you all stupid and crazy. Oh, but you better be good to me. That was Barry Gordy's type of attitude, y'all. I'm trying to break it down for y'all. I got to stop it right here. This rabbit hole go deeper. It go deeper, y'all. It go deeper. As Barry Gordy and Diana Ross' relationship grew stronger with each other, Diana Ross started acting funny towards uh, Florence Billet. And Mary Wilson. Okay, she started acting funny. And Diana Ross wanted to quit the group and start her own solo career. They already know what time it was. It was sacrifice time. Okay, somebody say so, so, madam. Do you think Florence Billard was the sacrifice for the group, the Supremes? And I said, are we going to say allegedly because that's how we got to bring it? Allegedly hail to the motherfucker, yes, sir. She was the sacrifice for the group. I'm going to end it right here. But here it is. Y'all do the numbers by yourself. Okay? Or do it along with me. Florence Biller died at age 32. Three times two equal what? That's correct. Six. Stay with me. I'll rewind this video back. Three times two equal what? Six. They go the six right there, y'all. They go the six right there. Somebody say, where, where are the three at? Where the three are so, so mad, I'm, I'm going to show y'all how they constructed this one out here. This one right here. How they put it together. Okay? Stay with me. She died on February 22nd, 1976. Let's add those numbers up. Two plus two plus two plus one plus nine plus seven plus six equals what? 29. Two times nine equals what? 18, y'all. 1 plus 8 equals what? 9. What do we do with the 9? That's right. We flip the 9 because that's how they do it. You flip the 9 and you get the what? They, the 6. Whenever you see the number 9, it really equals to the number 6. I'm trying to teach y'all how they doing this. Take the date of her death 
That would be the what? The number six. We just did it. It, it. Equal to the number what? Six. I want you to take that number. And I want you to also take the age that she died. That also equals to what? The number six. Put it together. What's six plus six, y'all? Twelve. It equals to twelve. What's one plus two? That's right. It equals to the number three. Put it together. There go your three right there. And there go your six. Murder by numbers. Okay? This was a, a little crafty. They did this one a little crafty. This is how they did it back then. They did it different ways back then. Now they letting it all hang out. You see the three six, the 27 club, the 24 club. And they were sacrifices and things like that. Okay? But this one right here, this is how they did this one. Ancestors busted it out to me. Okay? I'm, I'm trying to show y'all how to do these things. Go back and look at my video, Murder by Numbers. That's how they did it, y'all. Y'all be good. And go, go put them numbers together y'all self. So, yes, Florence Billet, she was the sacrifice for the group, the Supremes. Allegedly. That's how we got to say, if you ask me. Y'all be good.